so, you have an explanation for the rainbow's shape and its colouring. But what about the differing positions in the sky? The basic 14th century model can also explain that. It depends on the length of the shadow. As the sun rises higher and higher into the sky, your shadow shortens, and since there are no raindrops below your feet, less and less of the rainbow is visible from the ground. With the help of the fire service, we were able to take the camera high into the sky and get sufficient droplets below us to see nearly all of the full circle of the rainbow. Filming from the ground just rewarded us with the top of the circle. Now what about the secondary bow? How does the light for that come about? Well, not all the light leaves a raindrop after a single reflection. A little light is reflected a second time before escaping. And just like in the primary bow, there's a fixed exit angle for much of the light that's been reflected twice. This other exit angle is at about 51 degrees to the sunlight. These were the primary cones. The secondary cones are spread more widely. But because of the two reflections, the colours are reversed, forming not a red, but a violet outermost cone. In the rain cloud, the colours of the primary bow came from drops fairly low down in the cloud. For the secondary bow, Raindrops near the bottom of the cloud return these additional cones of light, which aren't visible to the observer. But progressively higher in the cloud, the returning light gets closer and closer to the observer's eye, until eventually raindrops are reached, where first just red light, and then higher still in the cloud, just violet light, can be seen. The angles of elevation to the red light are then 42 degrees to the top of the primary and 51 degrees to the bottom of the secondary. Surrounding drops return light which is visible as this second circle outside the primary. That's a mathematical account of most of the features, except that is for a proper explanation of the dark band. Remember, that's the darker area of sky between the primary and the secondary bows. In the 17th century, both Descartes and Newton explained this. They clearly established that light only comes out of the cloud below the primary bow or above the secondary bow. And so the sky in between them doesn't get any extra illumination. Interestingly, Newton is also responsible for specifying the colours. He thought that there ought to be as many colours as the seven notes in a musical scale and had to fiddle his results to prove it. So, is the rainbow fully accounted for? Well, the answer is no. There are other features awaiting explanation. For instance, if you look carefully at the underside of the primary bow, you can sometimes make out some red and green bands below the violet. These are called supernumerary bands. The mathematics of Newton couldn't explain their existence, but modern ideas, including the wave-like properties of light, do provide an explanation. Nowadays, physicists can also study the rainbow effect given droplets of different sizes and even of different shapes. Indeed, the droplets don't even have to be made of water to get the effect. Here's a demonstration at a public lecture on the rainbow in which a circular bow is created by shining a light on tiny glass beads stuck to a dark screen. We're using to create the rainbows is this fiber optic illuminator. We have a fiber bundle here, which at the other end there's a very intense halogen the circular bow is certainly convincing, but what's been a mystery 
are some colored bands created very close to the source of light. are a diffraction phenomena, and what we're seeing is light reflecting from the backing and then being diffracted as it passes through the glass beads. So, to some extent, the jury's still out on that one. Some questions require more maths and physics, but many questions can be answered with the basic theory. For instance, if one person can see a bow in the sky, what will a companion sitting alongside expect to see? The answer is their own rainbow, because each bow is formed about an individual's shadow. In this picture, it looks as if the image in the water is a reflection of that rainbow in the sky, but is it? If you think about it, that must be a reflection of another bow, one which you can't see. Let's end the program with this rare phenomenon, captured on film in the Highlands of Scotland. How is it possible that there's more than one primary and one secondary? And how can two bows intersect?